Words are super powerful, especially when it comes to your marketing. The words you use on your website, your content, your email marketing, pitch docs, everything is central to attracting the perfect fit clients for your business. In today's episode, I'm talking to the word guru, director, and boss lady of Bossy Creative, Elise Gree. I am in love with their brand and how they use words to create huge business growth and transform not just their business, but their clients too. You'll not only love Elise, but you'll love the tips she shares for even the most unsavvy of writers. So keep listening. Welcome to Sales Without Socials. If you too are mentally exhausted from the constantly changing algorithms, you're not getting a return on the blood, sweat and tears you put into your social media efforts and know there must be a better way to market your business, then you are in the right place. I'm your host, Tanya Williams. I love pink, wearing four inch heels and being the sparkly chief of everything at Digital Conversations. In the last six months, I have transformed my business growth by doubling down on the marketing strategies that actually work, and that doesn't include Facebook ads, Reels, or silly TikToks. So if you're like me, and you're sick of being on the social media hamster wheel and want to focus your time on marketing strategies that don't suck your time without a result, then make sure you subscribe and keep listening. Are you with me? Let's dive in. And oh, you know what? Let's have a little bit of fun along the way. Hello and welcome to the Sales Without Socials podcast. I'm your host, Tanya Williams, Chief of Everything at Digital Conversations, a Brisbane-based marketing consultant and trainer helping B2B service-based business owners with simple marketing tactics to generate new business and increase the eyeballs on your brand. Before I deep dive into today's episode, I'd invite you to download Social Free Sales, which covers seven ways to supercharge your sales without a single social media post. Now, these are just a few thought starters, and I'm going to cover more of these on future podcast episodes. Plus, I'm also going to cover a load more marketing tactics that don't include Facebook ads, reels, or silly TikToks. Go to saleswithoutsocials.com.au and grab your copy now. Hey everybody, it's Tanya Williams here, Chief of Everything at Digital Conversations and uh, host of Sales Without Socials. And I have a very special guest today. Uh, She's talking about something that is very close to my heart, something that I love, 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 and that is about writing and copywriting in particular. So Elise Greer is my special guest. She is the boss lady at Bossy Creative and I am so in love with her brand and what she's doing because I just it just resonates with me so hard. So I'm going to let Elise introduce herself much better than I always do to my guests. Elise, tell us a bit about you and Bossy. Hi. Okay, first of all, I'm surprised that you didn't call me Alice because everybody does. And I did. I, when I was re- reading through stuff, I kept saying, and then I was like, no, no, it's Elise, it's Elise, it's Elise. <laughs> oh, my God. Sometimes I even call myself Alice. Um, okay, so I'm Elise. I am the director and head writer of Bossy Copy. Um, basically, we are a copy and content studio. We're based in Melbourne, and we have just had our sixth birthday. So when I started Bossy, I kind of did it as a way to, it was a little bit selfish to be honest because my writing style before I started Bossy when I was doing more freelance writing and blogging was very like bold and punchy and I felt like that was really missing from the copywriting space. So that was like I just barged my way in that way. Um, And then over the course of the last six years, we've just built it up. So in 2020, we started what I call the Bossy Super Group, which is basically our, we have like a bit of a mix between an in-house team and a freelance team. And then we've got a podcast called The Bossy Type. And then I've got a couple of courses called Bossy Copy College and Caption Coach. So it keeps us very busy. I love it. And I love the brand. I love the themes. I love that it's super sassy and it's packed full of personality. And it's one thing that is so missing for so many brands these days. And I know I did one of your um, webinars and you're talking about creating even things like pitch documents and and copy mm-hmm. for different things. It's just like, it's just something that's so important. And I'm going through that at the moment. I'm rebranding everything. Um, oh my gosh. And I'm having so much fun with it because I'm just like 
you know what, bugger this, I'm going to really inject my personality and make this super fun because I'm so over boring stuff. Um, and I think there's way too much boring stuff out there as well. So I just, everything that you guys do, and if you haven't had a look at Bossy Creative, go and have a look at their website and definitely check out, um, you know, Bossy College because you'll love the theming and stuff. It's really lots of fun, but we're going to get into that. I digress. Yeah, so yeah. Um, words, super important. As we know, words are what attract us to brands, um, you know, the way that the tone of voice, how people are communicating. Why are the words we use in marketing so important and so powerful for brands? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like people don't realize the power that words have. Obviously, we see words all day long on Instagram, in our captions, on ads, like whatever it might be. But we don't realize that they're like reaching into our soul. And words are a really great way to connect with your audience like nothing else. So we would know the two of us from our studies in the past that it's really (laughs) important to tap into your customers' pain points, their dreams, their desires. When we're writing copy, we really need to yeah connect with them, but also show that we understand them and we have a solution for them. And you can't really do any of that through just like pretty branding or pretty design, or even if you have like an amazing product that's going to change their life, you still need to explain that to them through words. And there are so many opportunities to do that in a brand. Once people start a business, that's when they realize just how many words are involved in a brand between like their social media, their website, their packaging, their emails, like the list goes on and on and on. So every one of those platforms is an opportunity to connect with your audience make them fall in love with you but then show them how you can either solve their pain point or answer one of their dreams or desires and I think especially when it comes to social media like think about when you're sitting on the couch and you're scrolling you're not even like stopping we're just we're not even consuming the content as much anymore so it's really never been more important to make sure your Instagram captions are going to hook people in going to stop the mid scroll and convince them to read. Yeah, absolutely. Words are so powerful. And, and the thing is, as well, there's so much emphasis on social and obviously, um, you know, we're talking about how we can use less social um, with, with, you know, generating sales without social and, but Mm -hmm. it is, you're right. Words are everywhere, you know, and I think we just think from a marketing perspective, so often these days you think marketing people go, oh, social media, well, that's just one part of it. And there's words there that obviously stop the scroll and what we should be looking at. Mm -hmm. But as you said, just your website alone, and I've I really realised this when I was writing the new copy for for my new website, which is under construction. Just going, oh my god, there's all these words and pages, and like, there's so much stuff. Yep. And then hang on, now I need to write new copy for the EDMs that have got to go out. And now now and I've got to change the whole pitch doc. And then again, I started writing this list, going, that's going to change, that's going to change, that's going to change. Yes, <laughs> there's so much. There's, there's literally, so much. and not just like setting up the words. Like that's already a lot of words between like organizing your very first website, setting up your welcome series, all of that sort of thing. But then just the ongoing stuff in terms of like updating your website, sending out your emails, like that stuff is never ending. So it's really important to do all the groundwork, create yourself a bit of a plan or a structure so you have something to follow and minimize the amount of hours you need to be putting into it. But if you're really confident with how your brand is meant to sound, what its tone of voice is, what its personality is, it's a hundred million times easier to yeah. write all of that content starting up, but also ongoing. Absolutely. So what do you think the biggest mistakes are for businesses when it comes to copy? Like a lot of the small businesses that I'm talking to um, that are listening to the podcast and so forth, they're like, I don't know anything about copy. I'm not creative. I don't know where to start. And they're probably just writing often they're copying other people and going, well, they've got that on their website. I'm going to write something similar because that's what I do. So there's Mm -hmm. a lot of that that goes on. But like, what are the biggest mistakes they are making? Yeah, I think first and foremost, it is definitely that they don't really understand how important words are. The amount of times that I have spoken to clients and they're like, I've gone and built this like $10,000 $10,000 website. I've got this really amazing branding agency doing all of my packaging. So I only have um, $5 to spend on yeah. <laughs> copy. And I'm like, okay, but if you're not investing in really great copy, how do you think people are A, going to find you on this amazing website? 
or how are they B, going to actually want to buy your product with the pretty packaging if you're not using SEO to help draw them in and then a really great personality and copy to convince them to buy something from you and to also connect with them and make them want to be part of your brand, want to be a customer. So you've really got to consider copy as equally important. Like I'm a big design lover. So I believe that you really do need to have really strong branding and design. It's not enough to just have really well-written copy because that paired with poor design and branding, it just doesn't really stick. Whereas if you have really great branding and design, but you don't have the strategic and creative words, then it's probably not going to work either. So you need to have both. And it doesn't even necessarily mean you need to fork out thousands of dollars. Like I built Bossy Copy College purely for that reason. So people could DIY, but they could DIY in a way that's actually going to bring them in more sales. And then down the track, if they want to, they can outsource to an agency if they can afford it. So yeah, yeah, I think they need to, people need to start considering copy as just as important as everything else in their business from their products to their branding, to their design and not leave it as an afterthought or think, oh, you know, I know how to string a sentence together. So I'll just write it myself because that's all well and good, but it's probably not going to be as effective or strategic or connect with your audience as well as if you do it the right way, Absolutely. following a plan. Yeah. And I think one of the things I find is there's so much generic copy. Mm. People use these words and they just list these words on a website and you go, what the hell does that mean? That could be any type of business whatsoever. It doesn't actually yeah. tell me anything about you, your brand, your business. It's just a bunch of words on a web page or a bunch of words on a social and you just go, it doesn't mean anything. I think exactly. there's too much generic crap. <laughs> yeah, or people love to use words like solutions or yep. like just jargony words that don't really explain what you do. So yep. obviously, yeah, your copy needs to be super clear about what you do, but it also needs to be infused with your personality and the stuff that's going to make you different and is going to build your brand. Because anyone that has ever purchased a product or bought from, um, bought from an agency or booked a service where it's a really strong brand, you look at it and you think, this is what I've been looking for. This is the one for me. Because at the end of the day, there is so much competition. Regardless of your industry, it's not enough now to think that you are the best at what you do or you have the best customer service or you have the most life-changing product. You need to take it up a notch and really infuse your personality. And it's actually quite easy to do if you are say like a personal brand, maybe you're a service provider, you're a copywriter, you're a graphic designer, you're an accountant, you can really leverage your own personality and infuse that into your copy. Whereas if you are a brand like a product-based brand, you can have lots of fun with it and create a really creative tone of voice that's going to stand out and convince people to be a part of the brand. The whole concept of adding personality has been something that I've been rabbiting on about for a few years I've written blog posts and I actually did something the other day about it as well going it's so so important to inject your own personality into everything that you do in your business because people buy people they're not buying they're not necessarily buying brands they're buying the people behind the brand as well from a from a b2b perspective I know people are buying me they're not buying exactly conversations so it's important they understand who I am and and what I'm about um but that concept of personality is something that so many people miss. Um, so for the people, and not not everyone has great big sparkly personalities like us either. <laughs> Some people find it really hard and they and I, I hate to use the word boring, but maybe they are a bit more introverted or they're quieter and yeah. they go, but I don't really know how to share my personality or, or does anyone really care about my personality? What, do, what advice would you give people like that who are not creative and maybe they're not extroverted and they're not, you know, they're not confident around what that should look like. Where should they start? Yeah, I think, first of all, I kind of call bullshit on when people say they're not creative because I feel <laughs> like if you're a business owner or you're starting a business, you are creative. You have to problem solve. You have to deal with clients. You need to come up with unique ways to sell your services. You might have a special approach to something and that's why you've gone into business in the first place or you have a game-changing idea. So people are creative, but I think people are scared of words. They think, Mm -hmm. oh, I couldn't write that or no, I don't know what I'm doing with design or whatever it might be. Um, And I think people hear personality and they think, 
big, bold, attention grabbing, sparkly, loud, confident. And you're right. Not everybody is like that, but that's what makes everybody different. So I think the first thing is to really be clear on what makes you special. Um, And what I normally do, if I'm working with someone who is more of a personal brand, I ask them a lot of questions about themselves. So things like, what are your daily habits or what's the first thing you do when you wake up or uh, what are your likes and dislikes? And they can be as weird and wonderful as they want, but I just get in their own words what makes them them. So maybe they love to go to the gym at 5 a.m. because they think every day should start, you know, really early and strong or they might always take their dogs for a walk at the end of the day or they love pink and they love sparkles. So anything that makes them them. And then we can use those little personality traits and infuse that in the copy to make it sound like them. Um, I think also like being really clear, if you aren't that really loud, confident leopard shirt wearing person, (laughs) then maybe (laughs) you are more professional. Maybe you're more sleek. Maybe you are a really great mum and you love that about yourself. Maybe you have a really interesting way of telling stories or maybe you're the friend in the group that, gets home at 5am and you're like the wild one, like whatever it is, you need to figure out what your special source is and then infuse that in your copy. And so even if you aren't that really loud person, it's just figuring out what makes you, you and really sticking to that. So you seem authentic because you also want to make sure your copy is a really great reflection of especially if you're a service provider, what the experience of working with you is like. So you don't want to come off really loud and confident and then really you're a little bit more introverted and you're a little bit more serious or professional and then somebody might book you and then they're like, wait, this is not, this is false advertising. Absolutely, right? Yeah, you have to yeah. be able to, yeah. So making sure your copy is just really authentic, that's side one, really knowing who you are and what those little parts of you make you you. And then the other side is really knowing your customer. Not every person relates to that strong, loud personality. A lot of people are looking for something different. So if you're authentic and you're showing up as your authentic self in your website copy, your emails, your socials, whoever isn't really attracted to that other type of person is going to find you and they're going to be like this is the person for me this is much more my speed and there's going to be millions of those people that fall into that pool that are looking for someone like you so I think it's all about yeah being authentic figuring out what makes you you and knowing what your customer responds to and weaving that in your personality and also just like speaking and acting like a human that's something that I really try to do with bossy so so important (laughs) yeah a lot of people a lot of brands speak too much like brands so Mm -hmm. I feel like if you can infuse a bit more um, human-like qualities into your content think Mm -hmm. about how you would explain a topic if you're writing a blog post for example how would you explain it to a friend Um, and just really think about yeah making it a little bit more conversational and human-like absolutely and I think I think too often businesses play it safe because they go, oh, no, I'm going to upset someone. I'm going to offend someone. I'm going to, someone's going to look at that and they go, oh, it's just too out there for me. And I think, good. If the people are like that, I don't want to work with them. Exactly. Yeah. If you're confident about who you are and who you want to work with, you're not afraid to detract those people that aren't attracted to that as such and go, well, that's fine. I don't want to work with you. Um, Yeah. I think there's there's a bit of fear there um, for particularly people who may be newer, newer in business or don't have that confidence and go, but what happens if I upset someone with the way that I, because I've sworn or I've done something to say, you're just being human. But uh, yeah, yes. that's a really and important point. I get that as well. Because when I started Bossy, I was the same. I wanted to please everybody. I had more services than copywriting. I didn't really have a specific voice. My website was cute, but it kind of looked like everyone else's. And I didn't really have anything that made me different. And it was only over time that I realized that I was just kind of blending into the sea of everyone else. And so once I figured out, you know, what, first of all, what service I wanted to focus on and ditched the others and then really drilled down into my writing style and what my personality is and made that kind of the core essence of the brand, that's when the magic happened. And I stopped caring if I repelled anyone 
for me, I feel like it's an amazing thing to be polarizing in your space. And it's an amazing thing to repel people because that only means that you're super duper clear on who you are and what you can offer. And you're attracting mm-hmm. the very slim target audience that you want in your world. Absolutely. I think that is so, so important. And that's why those words are so important so they can do that. Yeah. So you mentioned before about SEO. Um, and yeah, and I had a catch, uh, chat to Kate Toon in our last series about SEO and where that fits and, and so forth. And that's often an add on as well. Like we've done all this now, let's look at SEO. Mm-hmm. So, and again, it's one of those topics that's a bit big and scary, especially if you don't know anything about it. When we talk about writing for SEO, can you share some sort of beginner tactics, tips on, on what that actually means to start with and where people should start with that? Because a lot of the people listening are probably like, I don't really understand how to write for SEO purposes like what does that mean definitely yeah SEO can be a little bit daunting and it's great that you've spoken to Kate Toon because I feel like she is the Beyonce of oh, SEO. absolutely <laughs> the good queen like so she's- I'm not going to compete with her tips but <laughs> there's certain things that I do and I'm definitely more of a creative copywriter I value connecting with your audience brand voice um, and creativity above everything else. Yeah. But I do realize that SEO is really important and I use SEO myself. So what I would do, this is exactly what I did when I had no idea, is I went and asked if I could sit down with like an SEO expert or a digital marketing expert for an hour and I just picked their brain and that illuminated a lot for me in terms of what SEO was and what I should be doing. So there were so many things. I thought SEO was just going to be like keywords, but they gave me a whole to-do list of things I needed to go away and do to improve my SEO. And that was really great when I was first starting out because my SEO is pretty crazy now. Like just from following the, that advice and really focusing on my keywords through my website copy, it's worked really, really well. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that if that's a luxury you can afford at the moment. If not, there are lots of tools that you can use. So there's plenty of like keyword research tools like Google Keywords, things like that, where you can just research your own keywords, which is exactly what I did. And then it's just a matter of weaving that through your copy. So say we're looking at your About Us page. If you look at my About Us page on bossycreative.com, you'll see that there's certain things that I've added in. So instead of just saying that Bossy is a copywriting studio, I've written Bossy is a Melbourne-based copywriting and content studio because if somebody's writing in Melbourne copywriting studio, then I'm probably going to show up a little bit higher on the Google rankings. So yeah, just peppering them in. My process, because I'm more of a creative copywriter, is to write it for the tone first And then I kind of pepper in or weave in the keywords, but I know that will be like sacrilege to the SEO writers of the world. (laughs) That's just how I do it. And the other really start the reverse, right? They go, I need all my keywords, and they put all, and it's it it sounds ridiculous because there's so many keywords, it doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, I think if you only value tone, um, sorry, SEO writing, then it can come off really robotic. And in the age of AI. We don't want it to sound like ChatGPT has written our copy. (laughs) It's really important to make sure you have a balance of both. And it can be hard to find a copywriter that does both because usually SEO writers are really technical and creative copywriters are a little bit more tone of voice and brand voice focused. Um, So, yeah, that's the way I do it. But then in terms of your actual content, blog content is obviously really important if you're trying to drive organic traffic to your website. And one tool that I rely really heavily on for all of my clients and myself is a website called Answer the Public. I love it. Isn't it awesome? (laughs) And so the public is so good. You can literally type in, say I was a wedding photographer, I could type in wedding photography into answer the public and it's going to give me all of the most searched questions, the who, what, where, when, why, how of wedding photography. So then I can literally take those questions and I can turn that into a blog post, making sure I'm weaving in extra keywords. I know brands that get, 90% of their leads purely because they're creating enough blog content, answering all the popular questions that are being asked on Google. Love it. Yeah. I remember when I first went to it and it had this weird old guy 
on the on the cover and it was just like this is the weirdest website I think I've ever seen <laughs> it was really quite creepy <laughs> it was a bit creepy was like, well this is so bizarre and then like when I actually used it I was like this is awesome yeah it's actually <laughs> yeah, it's really fun personality right like you look at it and you would not think that it's something you'd be like oh this is just odd but when you actually use it you're like oh okay yeah I can understand this yeah yeah it's a, definitely a kooky website but it's yeah. super handy if you are trying to brainstorm some blog content and even just using the Google search bar, like start typing into the Google search bar and what's yes. popping up underneath. So you don't need to spend tons of money on SEO. Of course, if that's a huge focus for you, there are some incredible SEO writers that can give you advice and even write some of the content for you. Um, so it can become more of like a well-oiled machine in the background driving traffic, but you can definitely DIY in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, and you mentioned that the dirty word, the, the chat G- <laughs> GPT, <laughs> and I literally just um, put a post on, on on LinkedIn about this this morning because people are like, oh, my God, it's going to, like, take over the world and take our jobs. It's like, no, calm the farm, people. <laughs> Not going to do that. I'm like, I see it as a handy little tool that can help us to get started and get inspired yep. and so forth. And I shared an example of you know, I asked it to do something for a LinkedIn post. It came back, didn't sound like me at all, but it was like, okay, I can just change a bunch of this yes. and it, I wasn't starting from scratch. What are your thoughts as a copywriter and people going, oh, my God, I don't need a copyright anymore, which is absolutely ridiculous. You still do. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on the whole thing around Yeah, chat? it's interesting. I must say I was like a little bit scared at the start too, but then once I played around with it, I was like, okay, this cannot compare with a human. Absolutely It's not. really great, I think, um, for even a copywriter, but also if you are, you know, writing doesn't come naturally to you. Like you've just mentioned, I think it's great to create like the skeleton of content. So... If you are writing, say, a email with a 30% off sale that you've got happening, you can literally ask ChatGPT to write that for you and then you've got the skeleton there. Then you can go in and you can tweak it and make it sound like you but sometimes I find that it can be like more work than just writing it from scratch. Um, It can also be really great if you are trying to come up with, say, like a tagline. Taglines are notoriously difficult because – we have to make sure we're being really clear, but we're yep. being really attention grabbing and all of that stuff. So if you wanted to play around with, say, like some website taglines or packaging taglines, it can be just a fun exercise to play around with chat GPT and see what it comes up with. Usually they're pretty cheesy, but again, you can play around with them. So yeah, I think it's definitely worth having a play, but not relying on it because yeah, it does sound very robotic. Uh, And it can be more, I think, great for just sparking ideas, thought starters and creating like the base of your content that you can change. And I think the, the, you know, the issue is if everyone just copy and pasted everything that came up, like there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that's exactly the same out there, which is going to be ridiculous. Exactly. And ChatGPT does not know how to speak in your tone of voice. So it's not, it's really not going to consider your personality or your brand voice or anything like that. So yeah, it's good to get the information on the page, but I think that's probably where it stops. Yeah, I totally agree. I think people are in this mad panic for absolutely no reason. I think once you have a look at it, you can see that for yourself. So when we talk about copywriting as part of the, the marketing process, obviously there's a whole bunch of stuff we can do from a marketing perspective when should people bring copy or consider copy or hiring a copywriter when they either have an existing business or they're starting a business and they go, okay, because obviously it is important part of the process. Should mm-hmm. they be bringing you on right at the start when they're building their website? Like where is it that they should be going, hey, Elise, I need your help? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like a lot of people do leave it too late. Uh, so in my books, I like to come in around – once the design has been completed. So say if it's a website design, I want to be able to see what the vibe of the brand is and also what the structure and layout of the website is because that's going to make it easier for me to fill the gaps. But it's also going to be great for the client because if I just write a website without seeing the design, which I actually do all the time, That's all well and good, but then once it's in the design, you might have to come back and say, oh, actually we need like an extra tagline here or this section's too long. So if the design is there, I'm able to write the copy in a 
voice that I feel like is going to really match the design and match the brand, but I'm also going to be able to write for the structure and the design of the website. So that's where I like to come in. But I know designers are like, no, the copy has to be written first. Oh, yes, that's typical, right? You yeah. can find all the copy, then we'll go and do all the design. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we've got this like rivalry and a lot of designers literally will not take on the project until the copy's done. So we usually nine times out of mm-hmm. ten will start with the copy yeah. and then they'll go and do their design. But often people will, like I said earlier, they consider it more of an afterthought. So they're like, cool, I'm ready to go. Now I just need someone to quickly do my website copy. So it's not only the fact that, you know, copy does take a little bit longer because it's creative, it's just like design, but also there's going to be like wait times and things like that. So you need to consider copywriters just as you would a designer. Usually they're going to have maybe a wait list or they might not be able to take on your project for four weeks and then they might need another six weeks to write it. So you just need to account for that in your timelines rather than leaving it the very end and also make sure you leave some cash in your piggy bank as well but what do you mean you just can't drop everything into everything straight away (laughs) come on like this isn't what everyone expects us to do i I know urgent it's super urgent i need it yesterday and it's like oh yes yes. you're on that for three weeks waiting for a decision on something but it's super urgent yeah (laughs) and i think it also depends on the project as well like obviously a website is a pretty big project but if you just need something small generally it's not as doesn't take as long but it just really depends on what it is and i think if you're unsure just always reach out to the copywriter anyway and see what their timelines are like. Absolutely. And again, it's not just about website as well. As you said, it's, it can be around social. It can be around, mm-hmm. you know, writing email series. It can be around creating pitch documents. And I remember when you did that particular webinar, I was like, oh, my God, I hadn't even thought about that and how it extends to that because obviously that's such an important part of mm-hmm. the whole process to win business, right? Well, it's typically definitely, yeah, that's it's probably one of my favourite tips is that oh. people forget about their portfolios, their pricing mm-hmm. packs, their email back to the client once they've inquired. But it's similar to, you know, your website copy. If you don't have really great website copy, what is going to connect with the audience and then convince them to add something to their cart? Nothing. So same yep. with your inquiry email your pricing pack your portfolio if someone's reached out to you they're a hot lead they could literally it's make or break so if you go back to them and they're not really vibing anything you've got regardless of your prices then they're probably just going to go and work with someone else or they might you might just be one of five people that they've reached out to Whereas if you have a really killer portfolio pricing pack and even a great inquiry email, that's going to make them, it's first of all, it's going to stand out from all the other emails that they've received back, but they're going to read that and be like, I need to work with this person regardless of what they're charging. So yeah, always keep in mind that your brand should be filtered through every single thing in your business. It's not just the big flashy things like your website. Absolutely. And 1000% agree with everything you've just said. (laughs) Tell us about Bossy College. Bossy College is on my list of things to do this year because again, just everything that I've seen from the work that you do totally resonates with me. Um, But I just love the theme, the brand, it's super fun, but it also has very practical, very realistic content that yep. anyone can follow. You don't have to be a marketer. You don't have to be ex- extroverted. You don't have to be, you know, a, the best writer in the world. But the way you share the tips um, in any in, in the webinars and stuff that I've done with you is is super easy and super relatable. Can oh, you thanks. tell people a bit more about Bossy College, why you created it and yep. what it's about? I sure can. So, yeah, I basically started Bossy Copy College because I had so many people emailing me wanting to work with Bossy or needing a copywriter, but they were at the very early stages of business. There's no way they could afford working with a freelancer, let alone an agency, or they might think that they, or they might enjoy writing or they can string a sentence together. So they're like, I'll just do this for the first little while myself. And then in two years when I can afford to outsource it, I'll go and work with Bossy or I'll go and find a copywriter to work with. So I wanted to create something that, would help those people in that time period where they're in the first couple of years of business or maybe they they have a business that's, you know, six or 10 years old but they're not really feeling aligned to it anymore. So I wanted to give them a DIY version of 
Bossy Services. So essentially Bossy Copy College, first of all, I've branded it because why not? And (laughs) doing what I preach and making sure that the course is really, really strong in its branding. It's super confident. And that brand or that personality and tone is filtered through the entire course. So everything is varsity themed. And essentially what you do is you work through the tone of voice and brand building modules to create your own really strong tone of voice. That doesn't mean to say that everyone is really loud and fun. The way that I do tone of voice when I'm working with clients and it's the exact same in the course is that there's kind of two options or two paths you can take. There's one that's a little bit more pared back and there's one that's a little bit more creative. So there's people in different teams. Uh, So once you've got your tone of voice and you're feeling really strong with that, then you move through the modules and write all of your own copy using all of the frameworks and step by step. So we'll do your website copy, you'll do your email sequences, you'll create some Instagram captions, your packaging, your portfolio, your pricing packs, so that at the end, you've got not only this really strong brand and a strong set of guidelines, but you've also got every word for all of your platforms as well. Love it. Absolutely love it. And they can go to Bossy (laughs) Creative and get uh, the details for that too, can't they? Yeah, definitely. Even if you check out um, Instagram, so at bossy.copywriting, there's loads of information there. And at the link in that bio, you'll see that there's a free masterclass, which is essentially like a really good taster of the course. But aside from that, it's just basically giving away my framework. So it's good to check out anyway. (laughs) Love it, love it, love it. And I'll put all the links to all that stuff in the show notes as well so people can access them easily. Um, It's been awesome chatting. Can we finish with maybe three key takeaways or three of the biggest tips for people who are wanting to do to refine the copy for their existing content website yeah what are the first the, the big the most important three things that they should do yeah first of all I would take a step back look at the copy you've got and figure out if it's speaking to you anymore or if it feels like you or maybe you're really like your tone of voice or your personality, whether that is your own personality or whether that is the brand's personality is really clear through all of your copy. If not, then it's really important to go back to that step and do some work and figure out what makes your brand your brand or what makes you you and start brainstorming filtering through that in your copy, whether it's your emails, your website, your socials, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also recommend doing a bit of an audit on your website and your blog content and figuring out how you can drive a little bit more organic traffic. So that might be things like focusing on your SEO blog content, but it also might be things like jazzing up your website copy a little bit, adding in some more punchy headings, making it feel a bit more on brand to you, rewriting your product descriptions. For me, your website is like your virtual home. If people are landing on your website, you've got about three seconds to catch your attention and convince them to stay. So definitely focus on that. And then I would also probably focus on your email sequences. So Like I mentioned with your welcome email, just making sure that everything feels really on brand, but also rewriting those sequences, which is actually what I'm doing at the moment (laughs) and having everything set up kind of set and forget, but it feels like you and it's actually going to encourage people to take action, whatever action it is that you want them to take and setting up like a really great welcome sequence so they feel nurtured and they're excited to be part of your brand. And I have a bonus one, number four, which is just think about your brand as a whole and make sure that your brand and your personality is filtered through everything. Relook at all of your internal documents, your portfolios, literally all of the copy that you have within your business needs to have like a once over and a tone of voice wash. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All of those tips. And I'm going through that process myself and it's, you know, I'm actually having so much fun with it. And yeah, it it's time work, consuming. It's fun. Yeah. 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 But once you, once you start and you can break it up into bite-sized pieces and then at the end, you'll feel a lot more excited and motivated by your brand. Plus it's going to bring in more sales as well. Love it. Thank you so much, Elise. You've just given us so much gold. Um, so many great tips there for people to go and um, get started and and I, I hope now that people understand how important words and copy really are because it shouldn't be something that gets left to last or we'll do that later or whatever. It's like it's it's 
just as important as your website, as you said, it's it's everything. So absolutely, thank you, you boss lady. We love it. My pleasure. Thank you for having <laughs> me, Tanya. Anytime. I'm gladly had you have you back, and, and we can talk more about coffee again. Great. Have an awesome rest of the day. Thanks, Elise. You too. Bye. Would you like to know how your business can make sales without using social media? Then a great place to start is with my free download, aptly named Social Free Sales. In it, I share seven ways to supercharge your sales without a single social media post. And did I mention it's free? You'll find it at saleswithoutsocials.com.au. These are just a few thought starters and I cover much more juicy content in the Sales Without Socials program. So sign up for the wait list if that sounds good to you. And you'll also find links in the episode show notes as well. Until next time you tune in, never let anyone dull your marketing sparkle.